This is Twit. This is this morning I worked Richard, my mentor that got me started in this a couple of years ago. Here we were on 75 this morning. Here he is with one of the Pine Board Trent. Back to Bob and then uh, he could send it on out and we'll see if who can copy who. I'm running about five watts. Uh, five watts for the 6AG7 transmitter. K9 EID, half copy, Bob. W is zero. Wow. BVT. Wow, wow, That's wow. Amazing. 200 miles away. And, um, wow. The trans that he was using uh, was this right here. Well, not this one, but exactly like it. Um, so that's what you heard uh, with the preamp and all of that. So we're just having way much uh, fun in the mornings when we get on together and uh, come. Uh, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, I think it starts the first week in September. I'll keep you posted on it. We have the peanut whistle net. And that's what really got me started on all this. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful. All of us get on that net, and you can't run any more than about 10 or 15 watts. It's amazing. Well, check this out. Um, here are a bunch of things that come in from people, you people, that watch the show and build. This is from Virginia. And Virginia, uh, she wanted to go to her club meeting she had finished the, the field strength meter. Then she did a beautiful job on the power supply. We'll come back to that. She said, boy, I wish I had time to make the uh, preamp up, but I don't. And I would take it to my club. I said, don't worry about it. I sent her my preamp. So she went oh, to her oh. club meeting. And there's her, there's her setup that she did at her club meeting. And I'm sure they all enjoyed seeing and hearing about Virginia's project. So we're so proud of what Virginia's doing. And uh, she's now working on the transmitter. So it won't be long. And uh, she'll probably be joining us in the morning. But uh, that's her uh, her, trans her uh, power supply and, and then, of course, our uh, preamp. Well, we're, you know, we, we get all these things. I, I just don't have enough time to go through them each day, but uh, each show, I'll, I'll try to get to a bunch of them here as we go through and in the future. But we're going to start off again with the with the transmitter. And then what you're going to do is go to Hobby Lobby and buy their, their pine wood stuff. It's is really cool. It's already finished. Uh, it's got a real nice edge on it. Now, I, uh, I took that and... Uh, I put a little bit of uh, pine, uh, so, uh, what do they call this, a pine wood something. It, it's a stain, and I stained it. Now, you'll notice those holes that I've punched with a punch, and uh, what that is doing is I, I knew exactly where the parts were going, and, and you want to follow along uh, with some of the things that we do about this guy. This is the layout of the parts, exactly the way they're going to lay on that board. So you can put your terminal strips and all that. So it's just easier to uh, mount them if you have uh, a little bit of, um, of some kind of awl or a, um, hey, you could do it with a nail and a hammer. <laughs> But uh, all of these great drawings are up on the website, and we'll talk about that. The first thing you have to do with all of this is you have to do something about the tube socket because you cannot mount those tube sockets and then try to uh, solder them underneath because there is no underneath. So what you do is look at the, all the diagrams we have, and you'll want to – Wire them uh, beforehand. Wire as much as you can. Here's one of them that Gene did. Gene's the guy that's doing all of these great, great drawings. Thank you so much, Gene. And you'll see he um, he mounted it on a piece of board, and then he mounted he marked where the pins are, and that allows him to do all of the pieces and parts. And uh, he's ready to go. Now you have to mount that. On the pine board. And uh, that's been a little bit of a situation in that after we do this and, and we have our 
our tube socket with everything mounted, as you saw in the drawing. How do you do that? Well, you need a standoff, and we couldn't find standoffs until, and I'm sorry I didn't bring the email, but one of you, thank you very much, said, hey, why don't you go to a local hardware store, and maybe they'll have a lot of this. Well, I do that. I, I do uh, shop at a lot of the hardware, little hardware stores. We got one here in Pleasant Hope, believe it or not. But I went to Ace Hardware, and guess what I found? I found exactly what we need, a little standoff. The screw will go through the tube socket, and then when you do all this together, that tube socket will be able to stand up above the board. That, see, I hope you can see that. That's how that works. You need two of them. And uh, they're a whole 43 cents a piece. <laughs> and, uh, there's the part number. We'll, we'll have it uh, in a minute. I'll show it to you on their uh, on the uh, parts list. But that's what you want to do first is, is you want to uh, mount as much as you can on the tube socket because it makes it really easy then. You turn that baby upside down and you're ready to go. And here and again is a wonderful, wonderful drawing that, uh, that Gene made. I just can't talk enough about his work. And he's, uh, he's made it really easy for you. And uh, there it is. And all of these drawings are on the website. Go to HeilSound.com. And we don't sell anything about that. We're just giving you the information. It's a great place for us uh, to, to put all of these things. It's all down at the bottom past all of our products, and you'll see the Pine Board Project. And there's comments and stuff, and we're talking to each other. stuff. It's really great. There is the schematic of the transmitter, and that's the schematic that you just heard Richard transmitting a couple hundred miles away. And uh, it just it really works great, and it's very simple. Now, I had one other problem when I was doing this. We have a piece of Pine Board, right? How are we going to mount the SO239? How are you going to do that? Because you can't drill a hole in it. Well, you could, but it'd be kind of stupid. So I took a something. We've shown you how you run the ground path with the number 14 or 12 copper wire. And I made a little cage for it. And, man, it worked out really good. And there is a drawing that Gene has done for us. That's, that's copper wire, and it's really sturdy. It works great, and that's how you'll mount that. I have a switch on it also, the push-to-talk switch, and I did, it, I did that also. Now, one of the things that we haven't talked about, and we're, we keep reviewing a lot of this because everybody's not together. One, one's a little ahead of the other and so on, and that is the coil. Very, very important about the coil. And we, Richard and Gene and I talk about it just about every other day. We're talking about what are we going to do about that coil? And um, we finally got that nailed and nailed really well. Uh, and that's from MFJ. The coil that we have and that you heard on the, the uh, uh the transmitter a little ago, a minute ago, and my coil, that came from MFJ. And that's the coil that they use in their one of their uh, uh, amplifiers. And so they're making this coil for us, though. This one's 41 turns. Uh, the, uh, their coil for the uh, their amplifier is much longer. And they're making this just for us. And you'll notice here, I, I dented one of the, one of the turns in, and what that's for is this little clip lead out here, and you attach that in there, and we just went on 40 meters. <laughs> that's my band switch, okay? And um, later on, we get all this finished. One of the projects, uh, I'm going to have a lot of little added features. One of them going to be, we'll put a band switch on this thing. <laughs> It, but uh, I've had it on 40 meters. It works great. The band switch right now is this little clip lead clipped right there. Uh, I think it's 14 turns. We need the whole coil, 41 turns for 75. But then we have to change the crystal. So what you do is you unplug the 75 meter crystal. 
and I drilled a couple of little holes right here, and that is my other crystal. That's to support, so I don't lose it. And then we plug that in, and we're on 40 meters, just that quick. And then we can take the 75 meter one and put it in the spare holes so you don't lose it. There you go. And these are all things we'll talk about as we get along, but one of the things that we want to do is to help you make the coil. And Gene came up with a really cool deal. He got it at Lowe's, and it's it's a, a cable. There it is right there. It's plastic. It's a cable comb. So if you had a, a bunch of wires, you could lay them in here and organize a run of cables. Well, you also can take that, go in another section of uh, Lowe's and get you a little, uh, oh, two inch, inch and a half piece of PVC. And bingo, you can make your own coil. And there's a, there are all of the instructions. We'll get into this more thorough as we get along in a couple of weeks. But it'll be on the uh, on the site, so you can read all the genes, uh, all of his information on how he did it. But you you uh, mount these coil combs on to the PVC and just wrap the uh, I think it's 14 gauge, and it works great. So that's one way of doing it. And also we have another one where you just wind the coil. Uh, and that's kind of fun, too, is, is making the coil. Uh, uh, I use, uh, I think uh, Richard used also an a inch and a half piece of, uh, of just PVC. But you have to put it in a microwave oven first. And you're going to go, what? Your wife or girlfriend or is going to say, what are you doing? Well, I'm uh, curing my PVC. What? <laughs> You have to do that because PVC and RF don't like each other. So you uh, put it in a microwave oven for a couple of minutes and then you can wind a coil around it. Probably didn't know that, did you? <laughs> all these crazy things, but it works when you get it all done. There is the complete list, including one that Gene put on there about an hour ago. <laughs> put on that uh, uh, Ace Hardware part for the standoff but that's all of them now again this most of these come from antique electronic supply you go to their website which is tubes uh, tubes and more and um, you can put in the search box ham nation and they've got the kits the power supply the preamp i think they've got them all up there now but be watching because they've got them all set up like that for you and um, the only thing is that uh I would buy my tubes from from tubes uh, from vacuumtubes.com. Uh, they they seem to. Uh, um, Mike is a he's a ham and he really uh, has a little better price and so on. So there's where you get your tubes. Crystals. I've got a lot of a lot of people coming at me like, what are you gonna do for crystals? The international crystals gone. Yeah, but Bryce still there. AF4K and he makes great crystals. I've got. Several of them, and they work perfect. And then AES, Antique Electronic Supply. But uh, that's all of the uh, the good things. Here's one other great thing that Gene sent me. That is uh, that is his transmitter, and that's the coil that we just talked about. And uh, it's it's really good. What a nice job Gene did there. And that coil uh, is done with that cable comb. Isn't that pretty? Not finished yet, but he's close. So I just wanted to give you some of those insights to what's going on and where we're going. And again, you go back to HeilSound.com and you'll be able to see all of these great drawings and comments from people. And it's really great. We're very excited about what's going on with all of this. So uh, thanks to... Uh, Thanks to W0BVT, the guy you heard on the recording, for giving me the inspiration. And uh, 
then, of course, what we'd do without all these drawings. Well, you know what we did, me and my funky pen on a black, on a whiteboard. <laughs> so, anyway, that's pretty much it for uh, for what we're doing here, guys and girls. And um, I, uh, I'm really excited about next week. I think we'll be able to pull this off. George is going to do another one of his sessions. If you didn't see this, you go back to HeilSound.com and check this out where he explained how vacuum tube worked. That was really good, George. And he's going to now tell us, how does this thing work? Like, what's going on here? Like a hyzine modulator? What's that? There's no modulation transformer. How's that work? George, you got it all ready to go, I bet you, huh? In your mind. <laughs> uh, I'm working on it, Bob. It occurred to me that I probably need to stop and explain what a pentode is and how that kind of differs from the triode we talked about earlier. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. And we're going to tear on into the transmitter as well. But uh, I think we need to explain how that tube works first so we We've got a good idea which way we're headed. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do modulation, isn't it, Bob? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't need all those big modulation transformers for things like this. We'll look forward to what you got going, and it'll take a couple of weeks. And uh, you're back. Everything good, and it's good to see you. 